Behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what things shall I do that I may have eternal life? This is the rich young ruler. And it's one of the most fascinating stories in the Bible. If you read the verses just before that, Jesus was talking to some children. And according to Desire of Ages, as this rich young ruler watched Jesus with these children, he was very attracted to this. He thought, wow, I really like him. There's something about him that's really cool. And so when Jesus left, the rich young ruler runs after him and falls down and bows to Jesus. And he says this. He said unto him, verse 17, or verse 16, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why callest thou me good? There's none good but one, that is God. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. Jesus is very interesting. He never wasted time. Sometimes, you know, you can get to the point with somebody and someone else says, I think that's a little harsh. You shouldn't get right to the point like that. Jesus would get to the point. And he said to him, oh, so he says, he said to him, why callest thou me good? There's none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he saith unto him, which? Jesus says, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. These are all commandments dealing with the way we treat others. And the young man said unto him, All these things I have kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Now this young man recognized he lacked something. But he had kept the commandments. Jesus didn't say, Oh no, you didn't keep the commandments. That isn't what he said. Ellen White said that he, Jesus loved this man when he saw him. And what he says next is amazing. He offers him a job. Jesus knew that somebody was going to need to take Judas's place coming up. And he offered this rich young ruler the job. And he said, Jesus said to him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell what thou hast, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Now, this young man was attracted to Jesus. He liked him. He was fascinated by his way. But it says, but the young man, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Remember the story of Jesus. Jesus isn't saying here it's not good to have possessions. That's not what it's saying. Don't look at somebody that might have something and say, see, you're not supposed to have anything. That is not what the story is saying. Remember Job, after the trial, got twice as many possessions. Who knows what Jesus would have given this man? He could have had multiple times maybe what he already had. I don't know. But he wasn't willing to give it over to Jesus. And he went away sorrowful. How do we do? when we see Jesus. In the morning, we wake up. I can tell you, Jesus is offering the same opportunity. He is, every morning, he's offering us the job opportunity. Jesus said that the redeemed of this earth are going to sit with him on the throne. Now, that is a job opportunity, and it's offered every morning. How do you do? How do I do? Do we go away sorrowful because we're busy? got more things to do than we know how to spend time with Jesus. Let's also look at Luke 23, 39 and, uh, to 43. Now, what it said in the verse previous in 38, we don't need to put that up, but it, uh, so this is Luke 23, 39 through 43. There was a sign placed above the the cross where Jesus was, and it said, This is King of the Jews. 
Jesus hated that sign. Pilate said, no, we're going to leave it the way it says. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him. Jesus is there in the midst of two thieves, one on each side. And this one blasphemes Jesus, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answered, answering rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. There was a sign that said, Jesus, king of the Jews. This, this is king of the Jews. Pilate said, and this, this thief heard him say it, I, I find no wrong in this man. Now, here's the amazing thing in the story between the rich young ruler and the thief on the cross is Jesus was in the height of his glory. He had been talking to children. He loved children, and he was giving them precious insights of life for their lives so they could amount to something. And the rich young ruler saw that, and he was attracted to that. Jesus is somebody really cool. Now, here's the thief on the cross, and he looks at Jesus. There's blood over his feet. There's blood over his hands. There's blood coming down his head from the thorn of crowns. It's not the glory that the rich young ruler saw. But that thief, and this thief didn't have much to give. He only had a few hours left to go. He knew they were going to break their legs before sundown. And he wouldn't be able to do this to keep breathing. But he said to Jesus, Lord, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Surely I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. This is an incredible story. Jesus is suffering on the cross, and even under those circumstances, he has the power to save. Hallelujah. He has the power to save. He wasn't going to let it go by. He saved him in the tremendous pain that he was going through. He saved that thief. And that thief, I don't know about you. When I get to heaven, I want to get to know this man. He did something nobody else did. He spoke in favor of Jesus. Nobody else would. He said... Remember me when you go into your kingdom. 